I have been working with Christina uh, Bandaragoda on a project um, titled Elevation Distributed Microclimatology Data in a Coastal Glaciated Watershed. And so this is located up in the Nooksack watershed. Um, and basically we installed a number of temperature sensors in the tree canopy at various um, elevations. And um, within um, the North Fork of the Nooksack River, which is a snow dominated watershed and also um, the most glaciated watershed of the Nooksack, of the larger Nooksack watershed. And so we recently published our data in the Data in Brief Journal um, in June of 2020. And so that was a great accomplishment, finally. And so Data in Brief is a great little journal because it's just a simple, like, here is a description of our data, no interpretations, just kind of how we collected it, and then how you, um, you can get, um, let's see, let's go down. So you kind of just describe your metadata. And then here at the bottom, we have um, our GitHub repo and our HydroShare resource. And so uh, Christina, actually, when we did the HydroShare tutorial, I believe the first day, she kind of actually showed our HydroShare resource. So I'll go over there. And so, yeah, so there's links back here in the journal. You can see we have our links to these different repositories and then we also put our data into the quasi hydro client and so the purpose of this tutorial it was really just to show you just kind of like a real life scenario <laughs> of someone that you know putting your project data into the hydro client and just the process just i'm just going to walk through the steps of like how i put our data into the hydro client and then how you can query that data within the hydro client so if you're unfamiliar with the hydro client <laughs> it's super nifty <laughs> um and so you might have, maybe you haven't heard of it before, but you discovered it this week during Water Hack Week. Um, but it's a map interface with um, a number of different, with basically any kind of hydrological related data. So you can search for, you know, here's just a regular, just a list of common uh, parameters. And then we also, you know, you can get even more in depth <clears throat> with the types of um, parameters that you search for. And so I'll go through this more at the end, but um, but the you know the entities that are contributing to this portal, um, I would say it's mostly universities, um, which is great because I don't feel like there's really a, any other type of portal, data portal for um, <clears throat> for different universities to put their you know different project data. So, but in addition to that, you also have, you know, government agencies like EPA and USGS and um, NASA. So, <clears throat> so I would, I highly recommend if you haven't already <laughs> to put your data into the Hydro Client, because uh, why collect the data if it's not going to be discoverable and applicable? Um, and then it also can help reduce duplicate efforts, you know, um, I know that's a big problem in the Nooksack watershed. <clears throat> is, you know, multiple people measuring stream temperature or stream flow at a specific location and might as well save money and collaborate, right? So let's see, how do I get? Um, so I'll go through this again at the end, but I just want to introduce you to it if you haven't seen it already. And okay, so as far as um, publishing your data, if you if you had a data set you wanted to put in here, this is just the quasi main page, and I did put some links in the the, the Kiko chat um, like notes page when you go into Rume. Um, so there's a bunch of links there that you can explore or whatnot or copy paste into a you know somewhere else for future reference. And so you would go into data and models, <clears throat> and then there's all sorts of information on the quasi page, but here you would publish your data. And it's taking forever. <laughs> um, okay, so there's different if, <clears throat> types of data that you can, I think, put in here. Um, so the hydro client, I think, is mostly time series data. So this is what this is what our project was as well. It's just continuous 
daily average air temperature, relative humidity, and then we also had some ground temperature sensors in there. Um, and so it just describes the different elements that is ne that's necessary for your data set to be published, and then you would create a publishing account because you want to be um, noticed as like a data service within their you know portal. And so you would create a new one here. I'm an existing publisher, so let's see. I have it. I'll just log in. <clears throat> But basically you would create, so then you go into the Hydro server, and this is where you kind of maintain and manage your data sets. <clears throat> and so you, um, you basically create a little bit of like a homepage or a profile where, and this, I'm, I actually had a question with someone from Quasi about this, but um, this is very specific to this one project. So if I wanted to put another data set from a different project in here, I'm not sure if it creates a new page or not, but that's a question I had for someone <laughs> at some point. But um, this just describes this data set, the, um, the lapse rate data set. And here's the citation if you want to use this data for any purpose for using in your hydrologic model. Um, and then just like how many values are in there, whatnot, geographic extent, <clears throat> kind of basic information. And so if you wanted to upload data, so this is kind of the home page of the Hydro server. There's a standard upload and an advanced upload, and I'm not quite certain of the difference between them, but basically I think maybe the advanced upload, you can do, you know, just more variables associated with your data set. Um, and there's these different, there's a formatting template, which is the observation data model, which I also put a link to into the, the notes page. Um, and a formatting guide. So I kind of just open these up to show. Um, so you have your advanced uploading guide, your standard uploading guide, and then the data formatting guide. <laughs> so, um, so I'll just kind of show you an example. And this is where maybe I need to stop sharing, but can you guys see an Excel spreadsheet here? Anyone? Yep. Um, sure, okay. Sure. Um, so, this is the template that they give you. It's the ODM, if you've heard that before, um, the observation data model. <clears throat> and it's basically a relational database with extensive metadata to describe your data. And um, it's very, um, they basically walk you right through it. This is very similar to what is on the quasi page as far as um, with just some more specifics about like which variables are mandatory, which are optional. Um, and then, so this kind of describes, the, at the very least, the mandatory variables that is necessary for your data set. And so just an example, here we have, you know, our, te our average temperature, our relative humidity, and our soil temperature. Um, and then you just kind of fill out each of, so these would all be um, uh, not, they're optional. So if it's blue, it's optional. So you don't necessarily have to fill out those fields, but we did just to be thorough. <laughs> And then our methods, we have our different sensor types, and then at what interval we were collecting the data, our different site names and location information. Um, and then just kind of our personal information, where we're from, who we are, <laughs> and um, qual any kind of quality control measures that we take, like how basically, and that can be different for every you know entity or agency, it's just how you, flag the data or correct the data, um, if there's any kind of measures that you take to adjust the data in any way, whether it's approved or preliminary kind of a thing. I would assume you'd want to just put approved data in here, but I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. And then finally, our actual data values. And so it's just one long, you know, spreadsheet with all of our sites. Here's NF3 here, and this is probably air temperature, and the further you go down, you know, just um, different sites. Um, and so everything is just in one sheet. <clears throat> and so in the intro here, the README, it does say you would you would ex export each of these, you know, different tabs to a separate CSV file. And so I'll go back to our HydroShare um, resource. And so here is where we've kind of kept everything together. So we have our um, in the contents page, we have all of our notebooks and all of our 
um, figures and anything related to this project we have in here. And then our ODM um, <clears throat> different CSVs. So you can see each of those tabs is a different CSV. And then, um, and so that's where you would go into here and then let's just say, we'll say advanced upload. Um, or the other one was a little bit. I think you just kind of drag and drop those files, your metadata files into here and then your data value files in there. So it's pretty easy, walks you right through it. <laughs> um, and, <clears throat> let's see. Sorry, there's too many windows open on my tiny laptop. <laughs> So yeah, and then I think you just get, you'll just get a notification from Quasi that it's all good to go. And then, you know, go back to the Hydro client once that's all set, go back in here, um, go, you know, towards Washington. This is, so we're located up here and <clears throat> just type in your data service, whatever you titled it, if you're with a specific university or a specific program and, you can see that this is this is our data service and you would highlight that and then you can search um, for those values or those um, oh yeah I was having issues with let's see let me just refresh here <clears throat> You have to, another thing is like, if you're over in Europe and you're trying to look for something in Washington, it won't come up. So I'm running into that problem. Like it won't zoom over to where you wanna be necessarily. So you kind of have to have your general area in the frame um, for it to pop up. And then you can save and then, you know, let's just say air temperature. Let's look at our air temperature sites. Um, and then search now. Please work. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so here's our, here's at least our air temperature sites. <clears throat> and more pops up as you zoom in. And so this is, it's kind of a, it's a curvy uh, transect, but this is our lowest elevation site and the highest elevation site. And if you click on these points, you can see our air temperature um, data is in there. And let, um, let's this one, this one has air temperature. Oh wait, I think there was a point where we had duplicate data because we were, we kind of messed up our template a few times and then we had to resubmit. And so it's a learning process and we finally got it in there, but I think we need to talk to Martin is the point person, I believe. And he, we need to kind of clean up. We have some duplicates in there. Uh, so that, I wish there was kind of a better way to manage and maybe I just haven't explored it yet, but to manage duplicate data, I think you just kind of have to rely on them to erase um, erase what um, <clears throat> any kind of duplicate or messy data in there. So yeah, and as far as you know, learning how to use this server or the interface, you can go to the help center here, and they have tutorials. So accessing data. There are tutorials on kind of exploring different time series data. Um, we actually wrote one for hours, but it's not quite finished. So we were going to try and put it up here. Um, but it's pretty similar kind of basic guideline. Um, this one here is pretty, pretty thorough. So, and of course, there's plenty of other information on this uh, web page. I mean, it's it's almost, it gets a little confusing. Quasi has quite the network of different uh, portals and services. And so it takes a little bit of digging, but um, yeah, I think there's also a cool way to, um, you can do workspace and I believe, so here we have some NASA data, but you can actually plot through a time series viewer and, um, the yeah. Oh, sorry, was someone asking a question? No, okay. Well, so you can actually plot data within this interface um, and you can do multiple different sites or different entities. If I wanted to put up USGS data in here, I can plot it here. 
And then you can also, you can download this as a picture and then you can also download the actual data. So, um, yeah. 